This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV, the Kia EV9, with available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults, with zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute and available lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. A science story, huh? Is NYU a scientist? They, I it felt, felt, felt right. Right. I was so And I just happy. thought, well, I figured it, out. I it was that tall. golden moment. Because science was on my side. Hey everyone, I'm Ben Lilly, and welcome to the Story Collider, where we bring you true stories of how science has affected people's lives. We're on a break for the month of August, so we're rerunning some of the wonderful stories from early on when most of you weren't subscribers. Hope you enjoy them. This week's story is from Margot Lightman. The story was recorded in February 2011 at Pacific Standard in Brooklyn. The theme of that night was cognitive dissonance. It was Boxing Day 2009, and I was doing what it seemed the entire universe was doing that day, which is going to see Avatar. And I went, and I thought it was fine, blue, 3D. I, I was remarkably unmoved by the whole thing. And, uh, and I came back to my parents' house in New Jersey with my husband after where we were staying for the holidays. And they were asking, how was the movie? And I was giving that same review. It was fine, blue people. I was unmoved. And as I'm talking... My parents are talking to me, and I'm hearing a beep after everything they say, almost like pushing a button on a cell phone. So they're going like, really? You weren't moved at all? And I'm hearing beep, 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 beep. And then this is going on for a little while, and I ask everybody, are you hearing the same beeping? Nobody hears it. And then I very abruptly go completely deaf in my right ear. And it was really strange um, feeling. And I was like, what, what? And then I closed my left ear. And if I closed my left ear, I heard nothing. And I start freaking out that I've lost my hearing on one hand. And on the other hand, I have this other emotion, which is if I've gone deaf for real, that means the last thing that I heard to its full extent was James Cameron's avatar (laughs) and how disappointing that is for me. And so I'm trying to communicate to them what's going on, and I'm really nervous. And so the next day I go and get an emergency doctor's appointment. Um, And I go in, and the doctor tells me I have a bad ear infection and gives me very expensive antibiotics that are about this big, and she puts me on them, and I assume that it's going to go away. And about four days into those antibiotics, I still can't hear anything. And that makes me very, very, very nervous. And at this point, I'm like, you know, science and medicine, you better uh, work. uh, Prayer is not an option for me. I'm not one of those people. So I'm hoping that this will work, and it's not working. So I go and see a second doctor, and he puts me on some steroids, which after a few days on the steroids, a tiny little bit of my hearing comes back, but with it comes a feedback in my ear that sounds like someone's constantly banging pots and pans together in my ear, and which makes the subway really exciting when you're waiting. Uh, so that's what's going on, and now I start freaking out, and people start praying for me, which is not really how I roll, and people start calling me, all of my friends start calling me because word's getting around that I've lost my hearing, and they all all start offering me medical advice, which is funny because I'm not friends with any doctors at all, and they all have things to say, and one friend calls me and she goes, I heard you've lost your hearing, I'm so sorry to hear that, have you tried a (laughs) Q-tip? Another friend called me who's a massage therapist and she's really into the mind-body connection and she calls me and says, you know, I'm really sorry that you lost your hearing but have you thought about maybe how, maybe you're not happy in your life and maybe you caused this to happen. Another friend to cheer me up sent me a book, Grey's Anatomy, for those of you unfamiliar with it. It's a book by storyteller Spalding Grey about how he went blind for no reason and his right eye went on a giant quest 
to find out why and to cure it, and ends up at the end of the book blind in his right eye with no cure and no reason why it happened, only to jump off the Staten Island Ferry 10 years later and kill himself. So that was to cheer me up. So I'm freaking out, and my mother-in-law, she used to be a nun, so she... And she, she hates me, to say the least, but she starts praying for me as well. And I, at this point, I'm like, you know, the feeling is mutual, but fine. I'll take your prayers if that's what you're going to do. But for me, I keep going to science. So I go to a specialist now because all I have is this little pot and pan thing going on in my ear. And the specialist does everything possible. He puts me, he puts, puts those things that suction things on my head and something happens and no idea. They, I, blood is taken. There's an MRI. No, everyone's like, why are you deaf? Nobody can figure out why I've gone deaf. And so eventually, after about the fifth or sixth visit with me, the, doctor, the specialist says, um, I think you have something called Meniere's disease, which is caused by too much salt in your diet, could cause you to go deaf. And I thought, you know, that makes a lot of sense because I have eaten enough salt in my life to have caused myself to lose my hearing. I mean, really, I, I have. Like, I love salt. I love it. Like, a few weeks ago, I was in the Poconos, and I saw a salt lick, and I had a desire to lick it. <laughs> I love salt, and I put it on everything. And I thought, yes, I have eaten enough salt to make myself go deaf. This explanation makes total sense. So he tells me, for a month, I can eat no salt at all. And if at the end of that month, My hearing comes back. That means that I do have Meniere's disease. We'll know how to treat it. However, I can never have salt again. Or my hearing will not come back, and I will be deaf. However, I can have salt. So it feels like pretty much a lose-lose situation for me. So I go, and I remove salt completely from my diet, which is really, I mean, really. Like, you could have said remove sex, drugs, coffee, alcohol, every other vice, anything but salt. I mean, anything but salt. And I'm miserable. And then the earthquake happens in Haiti. And now I'm watching this footage of Haiti, and I'm a mess over these poor people losing all this stuff. And then I I start thinking, well, I can't feel bad that I've lost my hearing. This is so much more serious. So now I'm not eating salt, watching nonstop news coverage, but not allowing myself to at all have any emotions about losing my hearing because I feel so terrible about the world and that this is, this is insignificant in terms of what's happening around us, so I better not feel bad at all. I shouldn't feel bad at all. So a month goes by of this. It's a very depressing month, and it's winter, it's January, and I go back to the doctors after a month of no salt, and they test my hearing. You know, if you've ever had a hearing test, it's beep. Beep. And I go in, and I've missed all the beeps with this hand again. And they tell me that I have uh, just lost my hearing in my right ear and that I don't have Meniere's disease. But the good news is I can have French fries. Uh, and they tell me that uh, there's a 50% chance that I'm just going to be half deaf the rest of my life. And there's a 50% chance it may just come back. And there's a small chance that I might just go completely deaf. They don't know. And then my doctor said that he's done all he could, and he, like, told me that I couldn't come back anymore because there was nothing else he could do. Like, he broke up with me. He was like, <laughs> there's nothing else I can do for you. You are a medical mystery. And, and he sort of sent me on my way, basically saying, you're going to be half deaf probably for the rest of your life. And I'm still not allowing myself to be upset because I feel bad about the world. And so I go to Whole Foods on my way home, and I'm standing there, and I get go to the buffet, and I get the saltiest meal. I mean, I get mac and cheese. I get fried chicken, whatever, and I put salt on it. And I go up to the register to ring it up. And as I'm standing there, there's a sign on the register, and it says, uh, make a donation to Haiti, uh, five, ten dollars. And at this point, I, even though I have insurance, I've spent probably a couple thousand dollars on various medical things for this hearing problem in the past two months. So I'm pretty much out of cash. And I look at the sign to help Haiti, and, and I say, oh, I'd like to make a donation. And the woman goes, oh, how much? And I go, fifty dollars. And she goes, oh, you're a good person. And then I'm standing there with my lunch, and I just start weeping at the register at Whole Foods. And I'm going, I am. I am a good person. And then suddenly I'm like, it's overcome with like, 
I am, I am. I, nobody is a better, like, there, are, there was nothing greater a person could do than give $50 to Haiti. Like, who, who's, who's better than me? Who's greater than me? Who's, who's more selfless, you know? And I'm just standing there, like, weeping, thinking about, like, a wonderful, what a wonderful, wonderful person I am. And I'm just crying. And I, don't, I do not know how much time passed. Uh, but I think it was at least 120 seconds. And... Finally, I look up and I'm just weeping and, and the woman's just standing there with my lunch and she just goes, okay, and just kind of hands it back to me. And I walk out of Whole Foods into this snowy winter day knowing that the worst possibility has come true, that the last thing I've ever heard to full capacity was Avatar. But on a positive note, I was sort of reveled in the fact that my mother-in-law like prayed all she could and my fucking hearing didn't come back. And like I was like, you know what? I'm right. You say I'm right. <laughs> so at least I have that. Thanks. <laughs> that was Margot Lightman. Margo is a comedian and writer who just completed her first book about being the weird girl growing up on the Jersey Shore. She is the co-host of Stripped Stories at the UCB Theater in New York City and L.A. and is a Moth Grand Slam winner. However, Margo's most prized accomplishment remains winning $1,664 on The Price is Right. For more science stories, take a look at storycollider.org, where we have our magazine, archives of the podcast, and upcoming events. The Story Collider is produced by me, Brian Wecht, and Aaron Barker. The podcast is produced by Rose Eveleth. Additional help from Brooke Williams, Lena Groger, Josh McCall, Raphaela Benin, and Sarah Mondalar. The theme music is by Ghost. Special thanks to Pacific Standard for hosting the show, and to myself for never going to see Avatar. When Cynthia came to TurboTax, she had just launched her new side gig, a true crime podcast. I'm a first-rate detective with a golden voice. As her TurboTax expert, I made her second income count by guaranteeing 100% accurate filing and her maximum refund. <clears throat> what did she do with that refund? Find out next week. Switch to Intuit TurboTax and make your moves count. See guarantee details at TurboTax.com guarantees. Experts only available with TurboTax Live.